Yeah. Do, like, don't you have enough of these things? Like, <laughs> like I can, I can that. see okay. like seven of them from here. I think I got too many actually. Oh, the radio won't work. <laughs> That's a disqualification. Oh. I don't know. Well, maybe, hey? Well, you may as well sweep it all up. Tom, get in there and start sweeping some snow off, man. No, we gotta, we we're gonna boost it here in a second or two. Just like that, hey? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, the 12 volt? Is it 12 volt? You got a key for it? What's 12 in metric? 10? Uh, well, the battery cable being on would probably help our situation a little bit. This thing hasn't started in, it'll, it'll in fire years, in man. It'll... 82 Renault 5. Non-turbo. Non-turbo. If it was a turbo, it wouldn't be winter beater. Could be though. <laughs> oh, I forgot how much of the floor is missing. A little more, do you figure? Yeah, it's a little bigger hole. Oh, you just need a bigger piece Pretty of plywood. Four by eight sheet. It's hopeless. <laughs> Maybe a one barrel. <laughs> no, I think it's a two, Tom. Look at it. Yeah, it's a two. My hands are cold now. You gonna be able to handle all this power? <laughs> <laughs> I bought this from Agent 9088. And then sold him my Peugeot 604. Oh, that's where your 604 went that to. Is, yeah. I don't know who got the better one. deal. Tell me when, mate. That 604 was pretty fucking sweet. Tell me when. Okay? There you go. charging battery it miraculously just started so I think we're going to first we got to get the the electrical system working I'm gonna start by disassembling the dashboard which looks like just uh, an exercise in breaking shitty old plastic stuff so that's gonna be fun let's get going on that prizing the upper lip downwards to disengage the retaining lugs Right. Right. In other Pr words, prize break away. off the little pins and then pull outwards on it. Man, I don't know if you what, they didn't say what level of prizing. Like this is just turning to dust. I might as well use like a business card. It's just yeah. going to turn to poop as soon as I... Oh, going for a bigger screwdriver. Maybe spread the load. It's just so crunchy. I can't see a situation where we don't have to prize this out of here sooner or later. Like, yeah. you tell me that every light in that cluster works and that we're not going to have any issues with any of the electrical stuff. Well, we already do have an issue. We already have a pretty major issue. Prizing isn't the answer. Prizing is not the answer. 
I even tried gently fucking with. <laughs> Have you tried roughly fucking with yet? <laughs> it's such garbage. Like it's like it's made out of a whole bit of cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can take my fingernail and just break big the chunks of this off. Offset shifter. Huh. It's it's very odd. The uh, diagonal shift pattern. Oh, the, the, yeah. the whole car is on. It's got two different wheelbases, you know? Yeah. Oh, the wheelbase is longer on one side. <laughs> and here's how we did it. Here's how we did it. <laughs> what? What are you doing, Scott? Oh, this is super fun. We're just doing the easy dashboard uh, removal protocol on the Renault 5. And what looks like the dimmer switch possibly having shit the bed. So that's a potential, get it? Potential problem. <laughs> this is some of the least enjoyable materials I've had to work on recently. Because that did not go well. Get this thing out of here. Not, not a fun piece. Look at this. Doesn't look good, right? Oh, you hear that? Mm. Okay, that's what we should have, and that should work right. without the key on it. Yes, so we don't need to be burning the points out. Watch that door. Okay. Yeah, Speedo, we got one. Does anything else work when you turn the key on? Yeah, like you should get nope. all your idiot lights nope. should come on. They don't. None of them come on. Yeah. My whole engine warning control system seems to be down. Right? Anyway, we're missing at least one bulb in the instrument cluster. Probably more than one. Yeah, but that's. But that's okay. That's okay. That means it's an easy thing to take out. Well, that works now. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. He says. Oh yeah, see? Oh look it! More stuff oh, well, is well, coming well. to life! That's nice. cool! Alright. There should be a choke light too. No oil light, no charge light. No choke light, no temp light, no seat belt. We got high beam. Uh, no key light. Mm, and no danger light. Oh, oxygen, sorry. I don't care. What's this one? French. The light bulb one. Means wee oui, wee. Oui. Do we have gas gauge? Do we have gas? Well, Man, yeah. there's a sender I don't want to be trying to buy. <laughs> Alright. When was the last time you put gas in it though? I mean. Oh, I never put gas in it. Yeah. What's your timeline? Huh? Timeline? timeline? Two weeks? Two weeks. Okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do it. It's got to be before the end of the year. you got to be on the road. What do you think? Colin's back with the parts car for the Rover P5 project. And uh, we were just looking it over. And it's, uh, it's ideal for what we need to do. It's got enough of the parts that we need. And it's not so good that we feel bad using it for parts. It's actually quite rotten underneath. Got a lot of old bad bodywork. And a uh, non-running, moldy, kind of, not, not totally beyond repair, just if we got two, we might as well fix the one we want. And you know that we can't build cars with only one, so... Prankers are just having fun checking things out. No, well, that is terrific news. And same engine, I guess, eh? Same engine. What year did you say this one was? Uh, 67. Okay. This would have been one of the last of these. Would, I think the I P6 came out. Put the M6 in after that year. Right, yeah. Well, the, the next model came out about this time. Yeah, they continued P building the P5 till the 72. Really? But that was with the ADA. Oh, the P5B. Well, there will possibly be some parts that we need right away, but mostly this is going to just help with reassembly. 
and we may take this uh, right front depending on how good the other one is you can see that the structure is not substantially better than the other car anyway and a lot of it looks actually worse so that's good nicely done let's get it uh, underway here I left the camera outside so it's kind of fogged up but I guess that's appropriate misty winter filter on the winter car here today progress I'm gonna turn the key look at that choke light working Let's see if it goes off oh yeah cool fuel gauge working um, hazard light working we just saw high beam works seatbelt light works um, and all the dash lights up that's actually pretty decent these guys too all lit up cool and uh, spent a fair amount of time actually getting all this stuff working again the, uh, just the usual rusty cables and the stuff my favorite thing that happened uh, yesterday was that the radio turned on no oh, maybe that was today at some point the radio turned on uh, at least it made some scratchy sounds so so if that's the case we're uh, keeping the pace I'm gonna have to rob cassettes out of the uh, out of the DS if that's appropriate yeah, so all this uh, nonsense working again. Pretty happy about that. And happy about these. It's all a little sketch, but it does work. So, um, all I was able to learn about these things on the internet with regard to the wiring in them is that it's not very good and have fun. So, the entire uh, printed circuit was not working. None of those lights uh, were lit up and it was just, it was literally every single connection. Uh, in the end, there was one burnt out bulb and I just robbed the one from the uh, oxygen sensor. Okay, so locks still don't work. Still have to put the whole dash back together, but uh, really a lot more optimistic than I was yesterday at this time. Just, uh, just literally needed every connection taken apart and cleaned. One of the things with uh, that's been holding this car up is that there's a certain minimum standard to putting uh, plates on an out-of-province car and this is not going to meet that pretty typical I'd like to say it's typical repair of this type of car being that it's just tape over top of the holes with some rattle can on it so let's uh, let's get into her here let's see what we're doing so far no problem. Oh, bit of a problem there. It's quite a strange hole. Hmm. Oh, another hole. And the bottom edge is gone. So that's something we need to deal with. Hmm. That'll be a fun beater challenge fix up here. Might see if we can just make it from here back and then only have to make one edge. Just makes splicing it in easier. And there we go. Let's see what's on the back. Oh dear, they've cut the bottom of the fender off and just left you with nothing. Okay, that's what we're dealing with there. Wow, it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a slightly dis disappointing way to leave that. Hmm, well, whatever. It's actually really decent in here, and that's half the work. What a great way to give yourself a terrific Tatum. Just zing, 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 zippity zing. The idea here is that we have to do this really fast. Like, we can't be, like, banging on this for weeks. This is getting, like, fast. Plus the front of the rocker panel is gone. But there's, really, there's not even any way to bolt the fender on. So we'll have to do better than that. 
Okay, I'm starting on the uh, front fender for the R5. Uh, just made a little patch here. Just got her started and I'm going to try and do it like this because the front of this fender is fine. Great datum. And I'm going to trace the shape I need here so I can fold all this now that I have the main line installed. You don't have to fold all this stuff first and then when it's wrong, you're mad. So you just clamp your random patch kind of on there. Just going to mark out what it we actually need. That line is there. And that is there. Sometimes helpful to draw a line on your panel too, so you don't have to line everything up each time. Just imagine that this probably used to fold along here. And there. And here. So I'm going to do that the best I can and then we're going to just cut all of this off. Then we're going to fix this guy, which seems to have gone missing. That should get us down the road. I've loosely hung the fender back on the car just so that I can speed up the uh, fitting of my repair piece here. Just, you know, lots of details to be sorted out. It's just very crude. And uh, right away I see that it's uh, it's too tight here. So I'm going to keep tweaking it. At this point uh, we have the repair patch just tacked in place with a few tacks just so we could look at the, the inside piece here which uh, was able to roughly, whoops, I was able to kind of sketch from the other one and So I'm going to install that now, and then this fender, the welding is finished. I'm going to tack this in here and then fold these edges over as it was. When we build the repair on the rocker, we'll weld a nut in the back of it so that this one can screw in. I'm assuming that's how it was at some point, I don't know. And then I'll probably put a couple of tacks in here. This will get caulking and undercoating and ditto, whatever. It's not hard in most cases to do a better job of rust proofing these things than they did when they were new. Like you just have to do anything at all. <laughs> anything at all. Somebody's tried at one point to put something in here, but I suspect it, uh, hmm, I don't think it helped. Might have been the duct tape bandit. Easy fixing. We'll get this. I want this fender done tonight, so I'm going to hammer it here. So on time again, yeah. Uh, this is the bottom of the front seat, or it was. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you. Okay, I'm just cutting pieces for that, and I'd like to get a good portion of that put together today. There's the center. These are the sides of the top. I am running out of this blue. I bought all that they had, so I'm going to have to try and find some more, but I hope that there's enough to finish the front seat. The back seat can get finished when I get another uh, roll of fabric, and if there's any slight batch difference or any slight difference in color, uh, it will not be really noticeable, but I couldn't really put two different batches beside each other. That might be a problem. And there we have the... Uh, rough pattern cut from the top. Uh, driver's seat, seat back goes here. And this gets uh, French seam, French seam, gold piping, French seam, gold piping around the outside of the whole thing. That's, uh, that's how we're going to do it. Next thing I'm going to make is the piping and then we'll start sewing the top together for the second time. I, uh, emptied the bobbin when making the piping and didn't notice, so that's a good use of time. Uh, maybe for, for laughs we'll uh, try 
threading the thing. Somebody very correctly pointed out that I'm missing a little guide here so that the, spring, the thread is bouncing around more than it should. So far it's only bit me once, but I go very, very slowly. But the rest of it is pretty much as per, and there was some debate over how many of these holes that you go through, but uh, you can see here it's more, this has never been used. So I'm going to go with uh, the way it was when I got it. Piping foot is on, uh, making things not easy, but at least possible. Yeah. If this were a project farm video, hey. Place the bobbin in the thing. Find the thread out the little slot and move it around the hooky arm thing there. Push the little arm thing down. Slide the old trap door closed. Leave it a little loose for the thread to come back through. Put the thread through the arm thing here and back through the other side thus. Bring it in the bottom of the first hole and back down through the second hole. The job is already coming together. Bring the thread around the thing. Hold the thread and pull it in there. Switch to your left hand so you can do something. Around the bottom thing there into the little spring. Through the arm, slide these in behind the little hook and pull that down. And through the needle from front to back. Put the needle thread through the foot and pull it uh, tight on the side so it can't move and rotate the machine through one cycle and it should pull this thread through and up for you. And there it is. And ready to go. Well, that uh, is the construction of the center of the front seat and that went more or less how I hoped. French seam on that side, piping on that side came out nice and tight. You can not really see anything but what you want there. Just slow, just slow. Uh, that went reasonably well. Okay, now the next piece is going to be this side panel here on both sides. Well, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Pretty happy with that. That's the whole top assembled and uh, that actually went, you know, that was fairly easy. Uh, there's some challenging parts on this, but this was more just a matter of uh, trying to decipher what was going on with the taper on the panels. Each panel is kind of an inch and a quarter wider at the top and has kind of a slight V shape. And that way this one got narrower. Um, anyhow, that is my loose interpretation of it. We got pretty close on matching the pattern. It's like about an eighth of an inch, but I don't think we're going to see that when it's all put together. And uh, yeah, I'll just be happy really if it just looks uh, decent. And now it's time to go for a walk with Frankers. Ready? Let's go! Hey Frankers, what have you been doing out there? Did you find something to chase? That's good. I've been just doing this. We're uh, doing the bottom of the front seat. Uh, today I've spent kind of deciphering what this is. This is the area at the back that pulls underneath and kind of pulls tight on the bottom. So I've sewn a piece of uh, cord in there, something to pull against. And I'm just lining it up to sew the back to the top. And I almost forgot to cut the little slot for the hinge. That's what this is. This goes over the top, hides the hinge. I've decided to do the bottom white to match the back of the seats. The, uh, the seam between the two colors should be underneath the uh, backrest so you won't see it. Otherwise I wouldn't do it. And I'm out of blue and this is the last piece. <laughs> this is the last piece uh, of the front seat. Uh, I have the other pieces cut already. And if I get time, I would like to finish this whole thing tomorrow. So for today, the last thing I'm going to do before I run outside and keep welding on the winter beater is I'm going to run this big seam across the back here and that should get me kind of 
70% done this thing. Next item on the Winter Beater Rehab program here is this uh, top of this rocker panel. Uh, obviously uh, oop, the, the fender being bolted to it. Anyway, the usual bullshit. It's really, it's, you know, I don't really, this was all kind of cut up when I got the car, so I don't really know what the what the plan was there, but it looks like, uh, well, whatever, who cares? Let's just fix it. This has a little kind of step in it, which fades out, which kind of makes, I don't know, whatever. It has to fit, the fender has to fit that for some reason. So uh, that's the only kind of, slightly uh, involved part of this repair. The rest of it's pretty good. I'm probably going to take some of this up here and just get rid of that. Just replace the whole top of this thing. And then I don't know what has gone on here. I don't know why they did that. There's nothing wrong with the metal there. I'm either just going to fix that or weld it up. Here's a, kind of an irritating repair. It has a few little tricks to it. Uh, let's have a look at it. Rather than really trying to get too precise, right? Just Get her sketched in there. How long is it? It's about that long. Okay. Let me get everything too big. Uh, how wide is it at the front? You know, it's got to be at least this wide at the very front. So add a little bit, whatever. Then what? This is about. No. No. Mm, somewhere back here. Oops. Somewhere back here. It's going to need to go. Uh, that bends up like this to a height, oops, to, I don't know, call it, this here is that, this is that divot that we cut in the, that we made in the inner fender liner. Uh, yeah, so that goes there, then this is there. And then that one is at a right angle to that and goes up an indefinite amount that way as much as we want really and That should Get us that should get us started Doesn't have to really be You know I know it's be perfect right out of the box here. Just rough it in See how quick we can do this. This is a beater beater bodywork. Okay, just quickly Pounded that into that. Now we have the basic profile and it flattens out up here. It's not exact to how it was, but it's close enough. And what I want to do, oops, now we want to start making it fit. So we know that really I'm going to, because the repair is way too long and this is a critical dimension, not the back, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to fold these edges in, use them to repair this at the same time. That'll be pretty sneaky and uh, actually pretty legitimate. Let's clean everything up and uh, we'll see how close we can get that. Here's our little repair ready to go in. This will all straighten out as we uh, go through it. Uh, as we start welding, you know, the proverbial tack and bash uh, get her close. So very, very close along there. And we're overlapping all this because this is a winter beater after all. So the only place I'm not overlapping it is right here on this corner. Uh, so I've cut that away so that that'll be butted so there won't be a hump there. None of this will really matter, but the, that should look decent. So even though we're doing it wrong, we'll do that. So um, I guess if you're, if you're gonna do it wrong, you should do it right. Here you can see the uh, fender fits nicely around the repaired rocker and uh, that's all pretty much ready for some caulking and rust proofing. You can see also that the fender, bottom of the fender fits nicely against the top of the rocker panel now and uh, I'm going to bang that edge ahead a little bit but the gap is correct. Everything fits really nice. and. Uh, with the tiny amount of body work, you'll never know that that was ever done. Leave a comment if you uh, have a if you have an idea for what we should write in there. Next repair is the rocker and bottom of the quarter. So I'm just looking at this. I the temptation is to do it in one big piece, but 
I don't know. We'll see. I think I'm going to cut the top piece off, and then we're going to see what's uh, what's left of the rest of it. It'll probably end up being two pieces. Typical of the construction of low-end cars at the time. Toyotas, Datsuns all had this kind of thing. Uh, quarter panel just tacked, literally, uh, sorry, not tacked, quarter panel spotted right on the outside of the rockers and the welds hidden by a molding there, holes. Uh, so rocker here, rocker obviously goes up to there and that's where all the rot is. There it is there, rotting. So I'm going to cut the quarter, or, you know, I'm not trying to do more than I have to. The only real rust on this quarter is where these two pieces overlap. The rest of it from here up, there's nothing to worry about. So what we got to do, I'm going to cut it right below that line. Um, even lower if I can. I, don't wanna, I do not want to do much here. Get this out of the way, fix the rocker, and then we'll make a little piece and we'll put it back on. And then when we, uh, when we weld it, it'll look, you know, it'll look original. It'll be close enough. And this is, none of this is really bad, but that's a fail. That'll fail for sure. I was uh, pretty excited to get to the back there and kind of forgot about the uh, biggest problem that we have here. Uh, pretty easy, just a lot of it. So I'm going to cut all of this ribbed section out. I'm going to leave this weird little pressed in part and I'm going to replace everything in front of that. Uh, there's no point trying to match all these ribs up. It would just, you know, take too long. I'm just going to make the whole thing, kind of give it a loose interpretation of what it was. So I just cut a square piece of 18 or 20 here. Whatever it is, it's heavier than what's in there already. So we're going to put the, put the, what do you call it, creases in the floor here, give it some strength, and then we're going to tack it in there, and that's going to sort that out. Are you uh, having fun? Sorry it's so cold. Do you mind if I keep working on the car here? I was just going to have a look at my new uh, floor patch here, Frank of Franks. Hang on a second. That's the first light toss, actually. Just fine. So, a, uh, a reasonable facsimile of the original, I think. And I'm going to leave this it's actually in good shape here. So, I don't know why that weird little pressing's in there, but I'm going to leave it. And the rest of this is pretty close to what it was before, I think. Most of it's rotten. And so, I'm going to weld the. Uh, there's a box underneath that I'm going to weld here. I'm going to weld this piece to the tow board here. And then that'll be double welded, and then I'm just going to punch holes in it and plug weld it all the way around, leaving about a three quarters of inch overlap. And uh, there we go, the whole driver's floor replaced. Hmm, I don't know, I don't think I've had an hour into it yet, so let's get this baby done. You guys know what time it is? It's time for Dean's Greasy Flips. Who cares or what? Who cares? Okay, we're live here. Dean's Greasy Flips. It's uh, it's November now. Holy crap! Uh, it's a nice day. This this is a car I've had for I've had this car for probably eight years. I've done nothing to it. It's a uh, it's an old '77 Lincoln Town Coupe. It's got the skirts. It's got the red velvet interior. It smells a little mousy. It's got a 460 that doesn't run. It's a big project that weighs thousands of pounds. You know, what better car to have to spend your winter restoring than a 77 Lincoln Town Coupe? <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Town Coupe is a pretty, oh. Oh, oh, they even have the little accent on there. Oh, you see that? It's the oh, coupe. It's, it's a little, yeah. Wow, I didn't know. It's and the best color, black. With a red interior. With red guts, wow. Yeah, and don't mind the old parts there, guys. Woo. Oh, God, I just she, smell guts. Oh, so she is a little she mousy. smells a bit, ugh. Yeah, unfortunately, this one is, I actually used to drive one. I remember I came to your house with that charcoal one. Yeah, you had one. But this one's in better shape than that one. 
it's just mossy, you know. Yeah, it's no, it's too bad. It was mossy when I got it. LTD trim. Anyway, 460. Uh, big block. 77. I like the big grills on these cars. They're kind of like the Godfather car, eh? Like, yeah, oh. the big fake Rolls Royce grill. Yeah. I kind of forget about this car sometimes. I, it's been sitting here for so long. Uh, These are all 460s, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're all the 77s were 460s. Okay, so the air cleaner's off it. I mean, cheese and sit. I mean, who am I kidding? I didn't even clean up my car to sell it yet. Gee. But I actually, like I said, I kind of, I kind of forget about this guy, but it had the big lights at one time. You know, it had the big white wall tires. Sorry, guys. You can edit that. The bumper is actually hanging on, which is amazing. The bumper is on the car. Oh, that makes it a rare gem, just yeah. that. You know, like, it's a Lincoln. That's a stinker. Yeah, it's a stinker. It's a stinky Linky. Oh, is it ever? Oh, yeah, you can see the rust starting here now. Power in town on the trunk. Oh, yeah. Is that bent, maybe? Maybe it's a little, but. Okay. There, he fixed it now. <laughs> this is like one of the very first cars. I think it was the second car I had here. It sunk into the ground pretty harshly. Yeah. These, these cars weigh a ton. Like, they are serious heavy. So, if you're really determined to fix a Lincoln, give her. <laughs> <laughs> it does need to go to one of you viewers that want to give it a good home. Somebody that wants to, somebody that really likes Lincolns and Oh, it's a skirt model with the, the big grill, 77. The only year for this grill and that skirt. Big project, so uh, I'd let it go for 600 bucks, I think. 600 bucks? Yeah, why not? That's a yeah, good deal on a great machine. Yeah. I, I gotta, yeah, let's sell this guy. I actually have, every car has a story. <laughs> this car I bought from a lady in um, kind of west of Spruce Grove. And, um, it was one of her husbands that passed away. And I thought, well, you know, sure, why not? It's not the greatest T-Bird. Apparently it's rare, the T-Bird guys are like, it's a light jade car, and it's blah, 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 rare, but rare, who cares? Um, this is a 460 um, complete, it, I had it turned over. It looks like he did a bunch of work before he passed away with a new master cylinder. I had some receipts and stuff for it. But of course I haven't done anything with it, because I'm a skid. I think I sold something and just bought this right away the next day or whatever. It's, it was cheap enough. And the lady's really cool, a really great person, and gave me a whole ton and ton of parts um, from another husband that passed away. Do I see a pattern here? <laughs> I don't know. You never know. Was, was she known lot. as the Black Widow or what? <laughs> yeah, right. It's a 76, the last of the big birds, eh? Oh, last. yeah, last of the big birds. Leather 76er. Yeah, leather interior. Oh yeah. The seat fell down. <laughs> I think the bolt broke or something on it, maybe. Uh, why is it all wet inside? Oh yeah, she's got a condensation problem. The back floor gets a little wet. Oh, it leaks. Oh, eh? it's a leaker. Nice interior though. Damn. It's not. It's not horrible, is Put it? Put those seats in something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. It's not a. It's not the worst bird I've seen, but I got. I parted over another bird. Oh, I had another bird I got from part from the junkyard, so that's so you could see the other. Oh yeah, there, yeah. Right? So, yeah. Available at extra cost, extra taillights. That's right, that's gonna cost you a little more. <laughs> <laughs> the light J T-Bird. I think it's kind of cool. I mean, in a way, I mean, and actually it runs, well, it, it, it actually, it actually flashed just barely and I think I ran out of gas. So I think she'll run. A lot of people don't think these 70s cars can be worth tons of money in the future, but may maybe they will. When I'm long dead and gone, maybe they will be worth more money. I don't know. But if for some reason, I hang on to them. I don't know why. Yeah, you buy them now while they're not worth anything. Yeah, and right. sell them while they're not worth anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I made a whole 50 bucks. It's certainly if big barge cars are your thing. Yeah. You can't do much better than 70s birds. Right? White leather <laughs> guts <laughs> and a cool. mint green exterior. Yeah, cool, eh? Well, know. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd let this thing go. Let's see. How about, uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to go for like 600 bucks on this one. 600? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a fine deal on a fine machine. Bucks for this fine 460 keyboard. Well, 
Yeah. I don't know. Thanks for the tour today, boss. Yeah, that welcome. was a lot of fun. Uh, I've got to know some of the inventory a little better. I've not even seen most of these, so oh, that's well, kind of fun. But yeah, it's good to have you guys. And uh, yeah, I, like I said, anytime you want to come back for more, I will. Yeah, let you, you know. keep us posted because oh. we want to see the flip skis all the time. Take care. See you guys. Let's have a look. Yeah, a couple of this isn't your entry though. This is not. This no, is just no, an no, auxiliary just purchase. A, yeah. More of a, a fleet leader, upgrade. More of just a, a lifestyle choice. <laughs> That's a good choice. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I think it'll be. Yeah, it's got that lower fender delete that most of them have. Yeah. But I found But I it's got all the right it. stickers on. Yeah, exactly. Right? And original uh, paint. Original paint, buddy. Yeah. Right. Nice. It's had, somebody tried to break into it a couple times. Oh yeah. That's other a, door honest patina. Out. They would yeah. say. SLT. What's oh, that yeah. mean? I don't know. Super luxury trim. <laughs> Whatever. It does mean fully loaded. Yeah, yeah. It does it, eh? You don't have the leather with. Hey, don't. SLT where's your uh, Where's your stainless wheel <laughs> glue on things? <laughs> Where's your yeah, rust? I need to order those. Get those yeah. stainless babies. Yeah. Nobody ever sees through that. The rest stuff. of it's decent though. It's quite nice, yeah. It's actually pretty good. Pretty straight on the tailgate. Yeah. Yeah, no, the bumper. Oh, buddy. This corner. Buddy. <laughs> Might do a delete on those. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a quick bumper. Pretty. Uh, that, right? Oh, is it a little. Bumper has got a little, yeah, uh, like little loving. Yeah. It's a little pushed. Yeah. I don't know. You're not doing any of that. Not really. I might fix <laughs> some of the rust on it. But yeah, that's the... pretty exhaust. Right. You just want yeah. to crawl under. You know what there. happens if you start fixing that. Oh yeah. Full well, these, Welcome to the jungle. Truck, though. Yeah. This is something you'd keep forever. You'd hand it down oh, okay. to kids. Oh yeah. Keeper, eh? Yeah. She's yeah. a keeper. You just put some wheel flares over top of the. So you're yeah. saying you're gonna like restore it? Ah, well, we'll see. Restore is kind of a. Uh, <laughs> Easier to restore than other things. So. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's true. Just uh, exhaust, tires, the usual bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Just keep Have it a look. stock like an old. Is person. it nice inside? Oh, it's really nice. Here we can go to the other side. Let's get all the things you'd want on the, uh, the truck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tweed door panels. Yeah, this '90s like bus interior. <laughs> Kind of all 90s things <laughs> had. That's yeah, exactly yeah. where that came from. It's got a sweet aftermarket stereo, but it's like. 10 years old, so it's really simple to operate. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't mind that. <laughs> it's got the single yeah. dial. Yeah, it doesn't make like a bunch of beeps every time it starts and stops. <laughs> and yeah. It's not flipping open, yeah. closed. Stick though. Yeah. Stick. Stick, yeah. buddy. Stick Cummins 4x yeah, yeah. long box. Man, oh, yeah. this is I'll this is great. Fire, let's yeah, have it go. It. And you'll see, it's a real man's truck. A few dings. Oh, nice. Cab lights too, which is a big selling feature. Oh, nice, man. I have a set of 37s that bolts right on, but you'd have to bring yours up a little. Oh, no, all stock. I feel like an old man. <laughs> Leaving this, nice. this is very handy. Well, I'm sure oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My stuff's not all snowy. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice, man. Nice you don't job. Want to, you don't want to put the old man canopy on it? No, no canopy. Yeah, no canopy. Lot. He's not that old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not retired. Hands up to my nipples. <laughs> 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 All right, let's. Uh, that's nice, man. When you, are you plating this right away or what? I've already plated. Oh, wonderful. man, you're just yeah. killing us. Hey, where's uh, where's the Jeep? Is that a piece of garbage Alex brought. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see his improvement to the yard when you drove it? Oh, the trailer. <laughs> The I was Chevy like truck a trailer? trailer of garbage he left Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Al. Where's your Jeep, man? Sitting over here. Are you driving it? Uh, occasionally. Occasionally? Do you think it'll go? Uh, oh, shoot, I don't Cold know. start? Oh, okay. Sure. I thought, uh, oh, man. people left keys. I love this thing. <laughs>
Okay, well, we want to go for a ride sometime. Oh yeah, so we'll have to do a test. Once we get another big snowfall, I'll show you it's, it's sure. extremely capable in the snow. I was really impressed with it. Oh, so you're saying we don't have enough snow? No, no, this is just this is insulting to it. Oh, okay. show any capacity with this. Okay, I'm going inside. My hands are frozen right off. Brisco. Jesus. This is uh, one of my favorite kind of things to do. Is uh, forensics? Yeah, is that what this right. would be? Yeah. Okay, hang on, sir. You might look down the sides of this van or just a common passerby, and they would point out this big dent here, but. Right. Yeah, but upon further inspection, you'll see a lot of uh, things that don't add up. Edges that don't meet, weird letting, crumbled zones. Oh, boy. Then uh, crumbled stuff here, pushed in stuff. Bulged out stuff, wavy stuff, yet perfectly straight stuff. Mm hmm. So, because yeah, I got to uh, looking at it now that I got these lights here. <laughs> right, and, some uh, lighting. I gotta like look down the gutter. If you look yeah. down from the front, and there's a big swale in here. Yeah. Okay. And then, because uh, remember the roof had all that. Yeah, yeah, up? sure. It's has, terrible, yeah. You can even climb up there if you want to get a good. Bird's yeah, eye view. Nice straight line on the other side. So, because we were trying to figure out why the hell the roof had so much bondo in it. Right. And uh, seeing something landed on it, but I think it got puckered in some sort of a side-based sort of impact event. Yeah, it's certainly consistent with a rollover. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking, kind of hit the ditch or something mm -hmm. but it's got to be a weird rollover because these doors i suspect are the original doors because they're they've been resprayed like they would have had to get replacement doors that were the original color of the bus and then respray them like you can see this is old bodywork here it's wavy and lumpy mm -hmm. but the big thing is is that this vent this corner is all like original corner is good. This lip here is good. Mm -hmm. so the damage is concentrated on the bottom and the top. Well, then you can tell it's just been. Yeah, that's that's pretty serious. But the windows all fit in it decent enough. Yeah. Like. Well, your first impression to put a roof on it is not that bad of an idea, eh? Like, <laughs> yeah, right? And the thing is, a square roof makes the rest of it, there's your jig. But as you say, the uh, the drip rail is pushed in here, for sure. Yeah, and then even and where then the, even here, yeah. that's not supposed to be like that. But there's lots of like stress and... Yeah, I think it was just a quickie, quickie fix of a light rollover. That's what I think. You figure a light rollover, eh? It was parked, I think, in the early 70s. And so it's a 61, meaning that this repair would have been done like yeah, when it was in, when it was probably still being used. Yeah, yeah. Every day. Well, yeah. when it still had enough value that Yeah. Probably it maybe when it was only a few years old. Yeah, right. Years. Yeah. Bondo and whatever, but that's not like back alley job. Yeah, like no, you know what I mean. The work, yeah. it, the body work is finished to a high standard. It's yeah. not. Well, what's bad, underneath it is very. Yeah, it's very average. But, but I mean, that wasn't the guy in his backyard with his no, uncle. No, no, like, no. It wasn't Uncle Joe. That was yeah. professionally done and painted. Yeah. So it may have been just a light rollover when it was only a couple of years old, and this was the standard of the day. That's how they did him. So we spent a few more minutes looking, and we've decided that that's really nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Looks like it had a light rollover and was uh, repaired by the standards of the day, which were not very high. And probably before it was even very old, I think. The repair is actually, until the Bondo fell off, the repair was actually pretty invisible. So I think it was probably done when it was fairly, fairly new and still worth something. That would have been a good used car at the time. It's gonna be some work to be done. Wonder if they got warranty or extended coverage on this body work. <laughs> they chips. You should phone the dealer. You never yeah. know. Volkswagen's kind of uh, yeah, yeah, being pretty have. generous lately. Yeah. Right. 
Say, well, I'll look the other way on the emissions thing. I just got some chipping paint. <laughs> I'll look the other. Way. No, I wouldn't yeah. feel bad replacing the roof because no, I think we very good try and find a roof. It's really not much good. So we'll put a roof and maybe some. We should do the A post and maybe the how many posts of these got? It goes right to Z at the back. Oh, a yeah, B a post. post. We're not going to get too lucky after that though. Yeah. This you'll probably have to take apart and uh, pound flat and fix and weld back in. Like if you look how the door fits versus the bus itself. Oh, oh God, yes. Like if it's yeah. Swamped or... Could be. Yeah. Um, or is the door flattened? Right. Oh, the door could be flattened. But I think if you want to pre-pull all this, yeah, that's especially for the sake of this, the trouble is that they've already pulled it with in. this. So since they should have pulled it here first, when you pull this, you're going to be fighting yourself now, right? Yeah. Or it might want to come. Hey, Steph, how's it going, buddy? Whatever, man. <laughs> and you have such a nice gauge here, right? Yeah, yeah, the good side really Yeah, this having one good side. At least it didn't do a 360. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just went over on one side. Light roll, easy fixer. Oh, yeah, just a light layover. <laughs> layover? layover that tree. sounds nicer. Well, we'll join it again. Uh, when, what is it going to look like next time we see it? Oh, well, probably gutted. Like this, but with bigger plans and a bigger than <laughs> like this. Maybe you want to add for a roof. Want to add for a roof. Yeah. Anybody got an extra roof for one of these? Help Jim out. Do Jim a solid here. Yeah. Extra roof. Is Local. Use it as a shed or something. <laughs> yeah, have one, we'll trade yeah. you for it. We're a... gonna use it as a toboggan this winter for the kids. <laughs> so they go, oh, I'll trade you this one. Yeah, we'll trade you for something Dean has. <laughs> okay. Good old string about this. There you go. All right. String theory. String theory. Tonight. How far you wanna go with this? With string theory? Oh. Well, the top of the rail doesn't really. Top right. of the rail. Oh, well, it looks like it kicks okay. down here. So maybe this. Uh, is... Oh yeah. Well, anyway, oh, yeah, you get the idea. It's fairly easy to objectively measure when you get it's it right. Got a pretty good gap. Let's go right. down to this panel here. Go to the top corner of the windows. Okay. Right, right here. Right. Yeah. See your. You can see what they did there. They pulled it out. Till they were close. If you go here, it should touch the middle one. There. So it's oh yeah, they, it's in a bit, but you see they tried to pull it out. Probably a little close. Now here we're touching again, so it's in at the top. So they just yarded on this in an attempt to get this to come out, but it's all nasty. the damage was locked in this seam in the rail, and that's where they didn't pull. Yeah. If they had just pulled it here instead of fucking with all this stuff, if only if they had just done that, it never would have ended up like this. You wouldn't have any of these bullshit problems, but they pulled it, they just water yeah. powered it out, they didn't, they didn't, because you can't, you can't pull on that, you can't get at that, you have to, you'd have to take that inner box panel off, Yeah, yeah. you did that, because it's all fucked up now anyway, yeah. if you drilled that off, pounded it flat, beat all this out with a hammer, that's your other yeah. option, and then weld that back in, you can even do a profile of the whole side of the band from the other side, yeah, yeah. just flip it over, make it out of OSB or something. And just, and then just beat the shit out of the useless roof. Yeah. And then at least when you, even if you decide to splice it here, at least you know everything is. Yeah, you brought it back and you're not. Yeah, because this is, so, this is crooked here, right? Yeah, yeah that's pretty sunk in. See the gap goes away. Oh so yeah. It's touching there. Big gap here, gone. The way that the door is hitting here. Angry dog in here. I've been a wild ride rolling this thing <laughs> <laughs> in the snow. It's been cool. If we're prepared to put posts and stuff in it, yeah, which you're gonna have. To oh do. yeah, these like, posts are just. There's no way you're buying a roof that doesn't have better posts than this. It's just impossible. <laughs> just like, curled up. Yeah, in it's, it. if you're buying a yeah. roof, then just get her close. And if we're getting her close, then I would I would do that. And look for a roof, and that's that's also not historically relevant either. Yeah, it's just a mess. Piece of it.
bent up thin to plus some sort of like a Gene Winfield or somebody did this. This is butchery. Gene yeah. <laughs> Winfield used to do a lot of light rollovers. <laughs> <laughs> In between customs. Should we work on the Orbitron? I don't know. I got a rollover that I got a couple of light rollovers that we should. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, come on, guys. We can make 50 bucks in a case of beer. That's right. Right? Get Buddy over there. He likes to put the bottle on. Yeah. It's good I found one of the windshield wipers and these little uh, covers and lenses. Or one of the lenses for the turn signals. Found as in. Oh, they're in the back of the bus. When I oh, they were in it. it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Because before I couldn't get the back door open. So. Uh, oh, sweet. Yeah, slowly getting. What did you order for your car? Oh, uh, wheel cylinders, brake hoses, uh, a set of points and a condenser, and uh, well, that manual. Oh yeah, where is that? Oh, it's in the house. It's Jesus, what kind of a show is this? Join us next time when yeah. Jim prepares for the show. Everything in the house, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see you had the keys to your new Cummins ready, though. Yeah, no, that's ready to go. So all right. We'll that's good. Well, we'll be we'll oh, be pastoring you all winter long. Yeah, yeah. The book, I think, is going to be a lifesaver. It's got all the power window diagrams and how to take everything apart. Oh, nice. This is it better than the Chilton's Renault 5 guide? Because I can tell you it probably is. <laughs> You probably got way less electrical problems than I do. Yeah. Oh man, those guys based on a complete teardown. Oh yeah, people, right. Like, yeah, we're not tearing this apart. I figured out what those are. They do a complete teardown and, and they record everything and then it's edited by somebody who's never seen a car before. Yeah. They're just like, oh, this picture's cool. Put this one in. Mm-hmm. Ah, skip all that. Yeah. Miles is here and we're talking winter beaters. So uh, where's your winter beater, buddy? I heard all this about a sweet... Uh, I think it was a Chrysler, Chrysler Newport. Oh, I got a Chrysler Newport, it's you guys. Sweet. It's another Mopar in the shed. Uh, how's it going? Uh, good. I don't see it. I don't see it here. No, it's, uh, it's undergoing thought a little it, surgery. Oh. Minor surgery. I thought it was ready to go. Uh, right. I, I really thought I could just dump fuel in it and be a driver, but turns oh. out 30 years in the field slows them down a little. Because Miles lives quite far away, we had him uh, record. Uh, some of the uh, putting together. We're going to see why uh, Miles' car isn't done. Well, we bought it for shits and giggles, and I'm full of them now. Oh, yeah. That I'm was a... Uh, deep into it. a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit.
So these are our new kittens that Miles rescued last night. A little orange one. A little black and gray one. There's another little gray one over there watching. 